Hey everybody, this is Tom from If This Car Could Talk. Last Sunday, we featured a beautiful 1967 Ford Mustang Coupe. Since today is Thursday, we'll have a follow-up feature with a brief history of these legendary cars. Thanks for tuning in. I'm really glad you're here. If you're not already a subscriber, what are you waiting for? It's free and guarantees that you won't miss one of our twice weekly videos. After seeing it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. By 1967, Ford's original pony car, the Mustang, was a phenomenal success. The first two years of production from three different factories located in San Jose, California, Dearborn, Michigan, and Metuchen, New Jersey, had workers assembling Mustangs on three shifts, and Ford found it was still difficult to meet the demand for the domestic U.S. market. Yes, by the end of the 1966 model year, Ford had sold an astounding 1,167,019 cars that were produced in its U.S. factories. Look at the following chart, which shows that by the time the larger 1971-3 models debuted, a base model was over 1,000 pounds heavier than the first year car. The numbers illustrated are for a base model coupe with no options added. Now available in a plethora of colors, interior trims, and more options than ever before, sales of the 1967 Mustang lineup was still strong, despite all of the new competitors in this hot market segment. The federal government had been exploring ways to make automotive travel safer since the interstate highway system was by now quite extensive and people were driving more and at higher speeds. The recently formed National Highway Transportation Administration mandated as standard equipment for 1967 on all cars and trucks sold in the U.S. items like a high energy impact absorbing steering column and wheel, four-way flashers, lap seat belts, padded dash and visors, and a dual reservoir brake master cylinder. First and foremost, the Mustang would now be able to accept a big block for the first time at the factory. This was a mandatory feature if Ford wanted to continue to dominate the pony car market. So the 67 cars were completely redesigned to accept the FE series big block. Ford chose to use the 390. This year, a deluxe interior option was also available, but unlike the previous two years, did not include the embossed horses, known by enthusiasts as a pony interior. These deluxe interiors had other features, like brushed aluminum trim, and were quite handsome. In addition, Ford would also have some internal competition from its sister Mercury division with their all-new Cougar also available with the 390 high performance mill. The basic 390 had been available since 1961, a derivative of the earlier 332 and 352 cubic inch engines first seen in 1958. But at the end of the year, it doesn't really matter how many options a car had available, the bean counters only wanted to know how many were sold. Well, it seems that even with all of the new competition the Mustang had in 1967, it still managed a respectable 475,346 units, which includes both of the Shelby models. Admittedly, a lot fewer than the previous year's 600,000 plus cars, but remember, in 1966, Mustang essentially had only one pony car competitor with the Chrysler A bodies which technically were not really pony cars in the traditional sense. As Ford had done for several years under Lee Iacocca's leadership, special models were developed for the second half of a model year. Many proved to be very popular, as was the case with the Sports Sprint Special. It was a specially equipped Mustang offered to promote the Mustang's third birthday. Originally, it was advertised as being limited edition, but due to immense popularity, the program was extended until the end of the model year. It was hardly limited, as 109,946 were produced, 
8,419 as hardtops and 8,527 as convertibles. Sport sprints were equipped with a louvered hood with turn signal indicators, rocker panel and tail panel moldings, full wheel covers, white wall tires, a vinyl covered shift handle for automatic equipped cars, and a chrome air cleaner lid with a sports sprint decal. Six cylinder cars got the same chrome air cleaner as the previous year's sprint. All these extras were offered at no additional cost, which certainly explains the popularity of this package. The Sport Sprint was a nationwide sales promotion, but it was also the basis for several regional specials. By taking the Sprint option and requesting special colors, interior trim, drivetrains, wheel and tire combos, unique trim, or by simply adding special badging, dealers could get their own instant limited editions at a very reasonable price, and Ford sold more cars. A win-win for everybody. For dealers in the Denver region, they offered the High Country Special starting in 1966. For Texas dealers, a model called the Blue Bonnet Special was also available. Both were available in all three body styles and all could be ordered with virtually every option a buyer could ever want. What differentiated them were special colors and badging. California dealers wanted in on the action, but it wouldn't be until the following year that they would get a California Special, available only as a hardtop with most standard options, but having unique exterior features like fog lamps, a blacked out grill, competition style hood locks, rear quarter panel scoops, a unique pop off gas cap, Shelby tail lamps, which were actually seen for the first time on a 1965 Thunderbird but with a different bezel and without the sequential turn signal feature. Trunk lid and quarter panel extensions and special striping and ornamentation. The 68 High Country and Blue Bonnet cars were only seen as hardtops and also got all of these features except the particular model identifying nomenclature. To boost sales during the model year, 1967 was an especially busy time for Ford and its dealers. The special edition craze was in full swing, and with new competitors in the pony car field, Ford welcomed the additional sales. Briefly, here are some of the special editions that could be purchased, depending on the time of year and the region of the country you lived in. The 67 Ski Country Special was first seen in late November of 1966 at Denver, Colorado's own dealers as another promotional package for Mustang hardtops and fastbacks. The Ski Country Special Mustangs were available in the aptly named colors of Aspen Red, Breckenridge Yellow, Loveland Green, Vale Blue, and Winter Park Turquoise. Also offered on the Galaxy, Fairlane, and Bronco models, the Ski Country Special Equipment included a ski rack, a limited slip axle, special medallions, window decals, and two snow tires. There were approximately 400 Mustangs built with this package. The Mustang Blazer hardtop was a regional edition promoted in late November of 1966 in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania sales district, which included Western Pennsylvania, Western Maryland, Northern West Virginia, and Eastern parts of Ohio. This Mustang was targeted to women with a sense of fashion and featured lime gold paint, a black vinyl roof, a standard interior, a personalized dashboard black, and blazer exterior nameplates that were affixed to the front fenders beneath the Mustang script. All blazers came with V8 engines, a cruise-o-matic transmission, full wheel covers, white wall tires, rocker panel moldings, and an AM radio. The Blazer promotion was extended to a similarly equipped Galaxy 500. Chicagoland dealers also jumped on the bandwagon of special and limited production Mustangs with their own limited edition 400, with 400 indicating the sales goal. Sold prior to Christmas of 1966, all were Mustang hardtops painted a deep metallic gold 
and were equipped with an automatic transmission, an AM radio, deluxe wheel covers, a louvered hood, wheel opening and rear deck lid moldings, an aluminum grille tail panel, limited edition 400 emblems on the front fenders, and a personalized nameplate on the instrument panel. According to one original owner, the salesman told him that the promotion was created to commemorate Henry Ford II's 50th birthday, hence the gold paint. During my research, I found that even Canadian dealers wanted to cash in on Mustang Mania. The Stallion was a custom-designed Mustang hardtop sold exclusively by Mainway Ford in Toronto. They came with special paint, styled steel wheels, stallion emblems, cougar taillights on a blacked out tail panel, a unique vinyl roof treatment, and chrome side scoops and roof vents. The pop open gas cap had a uniquely engraved stallion logo and the Mustang's traditional lettering was replaced with block letters spelling out stallion. The model was dropped after only eight were produced, four with the 289 Hypo engine and four with the 390. This car sounds especially intriguing to me. Have you ever seen one? Appropriately, in April of 1967, exactly 3,112 third birthday treat Mustang hardtops were sold according to Kevin Marty's Mustang by the numbers book. Similar to the sports sprint package, they were offered in three colors, candy apple red, springtime yellow, and a special Thunderbird diamond green. Other no-cost options include knitted vinyl interior, door edge guards, wheel lift and rocker panel moldings, a louvered hood, white wall tires, and deluxe wheel covers. Indianapolis area dealers also offered their customers the Pace Setter Mustang hardtop, even though the Camaro was the actual 67 Indy Pace car. To resemble the Pace Car Mustang from 1965, they included special two-tone stripes over Wimbledon white paint, a rear panel grille with reflective blue inserts, a louvered hood, white wall tires, a blue standard interior, rocker moldings, and full wheel covers. To get people into the showrooms, dealers offered a free Drive Carefully in Ford Country reflective bumper sticker. There were approximately 324 pace setter specials produced. Further south, the Lone Star Limited Mustang was a Texas only edition that included the sports sprint equipment plus special blue bonnet, blue paint, a Texas shaped brass fender badge, and two toned deluxe blue interiors. Advertising indicated that there were only to be 700 built. However, a mere 175 were actually delivered. Nebraska area dealers used this year to cross promote the state's centennial observance by offering a centennial sports sprint special. Based on the sports sprint model, it also added a special Nebraska centennial medallion. Little is known about this special, but it is suspected that dealers were instructed to add the medallions to any available 67 Sports Sprint Mustang. It's not known as to how many were offered for sale or if there were any special colors available. Finally, one of the most ingenious marketing schemes ever devised, at least in my humble opinion, was called the Branded Special. It was an add-on kit to help dealers sell used 1967 and 8 Mustangs. Available for the first time in late 1967, the kit included special side stripes in five different colors, C-pillar medallions, and a choice of 15 paisley, sculptured, tweed, or leather-designed vinyl tops with screw-on moldings. There was also a kit designed to fit the 65-66 Mustangs as well. Dealers advertised that they could brand your Mustang for a price beginning at $39.95. However, the most special 67 Mustang was undoubtedly a Shelby GT500 prototype coupe nicknamed Little Red. It was on display at the 1968 New Car Show at the Los Angeles Coliseum to gauge market response as a possible new model Shelby for the year. 
This exciting prototype utilized a supercharged 428 with a C6 automatic. Available only as a coupe and was painted a deep, rich shade of red with a vinyl top. Lee Gray was the Southern California District Sales Manager for Ford at the time and he was looking for something unique to spark the sales of Mustangs in Los Angeles. Ford dealers had tried promotions like the 1967 rainbow colored Mustangs as well as adding more accessories and options to dress up cars for public view. The objective was to make the Mustangs sold in California unique and to look custom made, thus differentiating them from the standard models available elsewhere. Lee saw this as an opportunity to use all of the elements of design and performance of this prototype to market his California only Mustang. Shelby Automotive, now a part of Ford, was assigned the task of designing and engineering the necessary parts and assembly procedures for the GT California Special. This was done right alongside the development of their 1968 Shelby models. The fiberglass parts were crafted at A.O. Smith in Ionia, Michigan in steel molds. A.O. Smith was also the same OEM manufacturer used by GM for the Corvette fiberglass bodies. The fiberglass parts for the GT California Special included the rear deck lid and end caps, taillight panel, and side scoops. At first, it was known as the GTSC as a nationally available sport coupe. Then, after some discussion, developed as the GT California Special. These limited edition cars have become legendary among collectors, and because a buyer could order nearly anything available for the standard Mustang, other than options that would conflict with the GT California Special, such as fog lights or C stripes. The GT option package was available on the GT California Special, so some, but not all, California Specials are also true GTs. The GT and GT California Special has nothing to do with the GT package. The number of one-off and unusually equipped models made possible by these policies resulted in many uncommon cars. Little Red was thought to have been crushed but was discovered in early 2018 after missing for over 50 years. Craig Jackson tracked it down using Ford's registered VIN as opposed to using the Shelby VIN which it had been assigned. Jackson discovered it rotting away in an open field in Weatherford, Texas after being passed around by numerous owners. Little Red has since been restored to its former glory. Since Ford offered many different colors, interior trims, engines, and other options for the extensive list found at the local dealer, many people wonder how rare their car actually is. Well, if you don't know, Kevin Marty of Marty Auto Works is the official licensee from Ford and can give you detailed production information for any 1967 to 2017 Ford Motor Company product. He also has a line of reproduction parts that have been carefully researched to be as authentic as they can be without breaking the bank. He can tell you where your car was sold new, all the factory equipment it came with, and many other interesting things. Contact Marty Auto Works for more information. The Mustang name is legendary, and when seeing our gorgeous feature car, you can see why. During the photo shoot, it was hard to keep curious spectators at bay. If you missed the feature from last Sunday, search for it and check it out. You won't be disappointed. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos, please hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, and click on the like button. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please share it. Next Sunday's feature car is a 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner that has been in the care of its current owner for many years and has evolved into a serious day two car complete with a transplanted 446 barrel engine and other performance goodies and has been personalized to suit the owner. It's a great car and has a fascinating history as well. See you then.